So we are recording this. If you have to sign off or you miss any sessions this week, that's the intention. So on Friday, we will send replays out to everyone. So you'll have all of these. You can, um, we'll create a nice uh, web page and then you can get access to those uh, at any time in the future. So welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for, for joining me for this first of five sessions this week, all at the same time, creating a new wealth paradigm. And we're gonna talk today about becoming more joyful in our relationship with money. And like I said, we will be uh, doing some meditation and all kinds of good stuff. And so I am going to share my screen. Let's see, I see a question coming in. Uh, does that mean we can only access the replay on Friday for each day? No. So because you're here, that means you're getting these daily emails. So every day you'll be getting um, a, a reminder about the session tomorrow morning, and then it'll have like a, just a recap and um, kind of like what you got today. So every day you'll get that and then you'll get the replay from the day before. So then you'll have that by the next day. And uh, yeah, we'll keep that. Keep that good. So, okay, sharing screen. And I, I do have, I will open up the chat. Good morning, good morning. In fact, it'd be great if you could introduce yourself and share where you're coming in from, any details that you'd like to share. If you've started to read the book, I know there are a few people still waiting to get it, but many people, including Canada, which was like one of, they, they were the ones that had more trouble than, than a lot of other areas. So, okay. Here we go. You can see my screen, I would assume, and I can see all of you at the top. And okay, there we go. Put myself off on the side. So welcome, welcome. And open up chat. <laughs> Little details, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, and that's where you're at. Great, with the book, that's perfect. And um, okay, so if you're hopefully in the right place, and I will go to the first slide. I just wanted to share a few things before we get started, and like I said, we will do a meditation in a few minutes, but I wanted to just give folks a moment to settle in. So last week, I had a really difficult situation arise that brought me back to my youth. And I mention some of my youth in the book. It was not so much meant to be about me. It's meant to be about you and your own experiences, right, with money. But as you may know, I grew up in a difficult home where I didn't really feel safe. And back then, I did what I could to protect myself. Um, I shut down my feeling sense. Now I understand what that means focused eventually on making money because I thought that that creating financial success for myself, you know, would be the dream that would keep me safe. It would take me away from the pain that I had experienced growing up. And what was amazing is that my goal around money became a very powerful outlet that helped me stay in the game is how I would say it, to keep showing up and to try to find a better life. Money was that thing. Being super sensitive, I needed something to hold on to in, in life. And, and money gave me hope that life wasn't going to be filled with danger and manipulation and breaches of trust and all the pain that I was dealing with when I was young. And, and Instead, there was a way to break free of that. Like that's what I thought that that money would bring this kind of sense of deep, lasting joy. Which, if you've read any of the book or hung out with me for a while, you know that didn't really turn out the way I thought. But but I thought that money would do that, and it turns out I was actually right, but not in the way that I thought. Right? Um, if you started the book. You know, I thought that, that joy was going to come from these places based on the external relationship that I had with the world and, um, and then not having to worry about money, not having to feel shame about where I had come from. And, you know, this, this idea of, of basically escaping these problems was what I was going to get. 
but instead money would become one of my greatest teachers, revealing how we can all be living better lives uh, purely by dealing with reality rather than trying to wrap ourselves with this proverbial bubble wrap that many of us believe that money can do. And, and this idea that money mindfulness can become a daily practice that not only teaches us how to become a better person, but also a better steward of the planet, a better parent for our kids, a better coach for our clients, a better life companion to our partner, not ignoring things, but by fully facing all parts of of our life, even the scary parts. And by looking them in the eye and saying that this is something I can learn from and I will not back down until I learn and I grow and I improve throughout my whole entire life until the moment I take that last dying breath. And that when we decide to become mindful about our money, our whole lives change for the better. And it happens because when you become aware of what's stopping you from achieving and creating what you most want, that thing stops wielding power over you and you're able to live this life of great meaning and purpose and nothing is the same ever after that. The whole notion of purpose lies at the center of all of our relationships and it gives rise to this great truth, which is that Every relationship is an opportunity to fulfill your highest purpose in life. The more challenging the relationship, the greater the opportunity. Relationships are here to bring us to earth, to ground us, and to connect us into this sense of core stability in life. And often they do this by, you know, relationships are buffeting us around, right, and emotionally. And the way that we respond to these emotional weather weather patterns determines how rooted and comfortable we are in the very nature of our being. So when we learn how to train our mind to serve our truest self, then something like money comes along and there is no other possibility but the opportunity to have it improve your life and the lives of countless others. And when you learn how to train your mind uh, to serve the, the truest parts of yourself, your soul becomes embodied in all aspects of your life with your money, with your relationships, with your health and the food you eat and with the environment, with, with all of it. And that is what I consider the mindful millionaire way of being. It's also about taking the preciousness of this human life very, very seriously. It is an incredible privilege to be born into a human life. No matter you know, the color of the skin, where you've come from, no matter what it is the backstory to the life that you're living in this particular you know, engagement, it's a privilege to be alive. And I've met so many people who have come from the most difficult situations you can possibly imagine, and they have refused to see limitation, and for that reason have overcome great difficulty. And not that there aren't obstacles, right? That there's not, not that there aren't challenges that we're gonna be coming up against and circumstances, but this idea that they have tapped into this relentless power to, to know that anything is possible for them. And I think that, that we do these, we, we tap into this power because it's like our life destiny to reach this state of realization where, where we know that we have the ability to improve our lives. And, and once we see through the patterns that keep us in suffering, we become just the most amazing leaders because we're able to help other people through similar circumstances that we've been through. We, we go on to finding ways to invent systems and create techniques and write books and something that allows uh, ourselves and others to find the truth that lies inside and the, the, to find the silence that lies behind the human mind. And so I, I'm so glad you're here today. I, I love what, we, you know, has come together. I'm going to try and pay attention to some of these notes as I, as I go. 
We've got five days together. Today is about joy and money. Uh, and tomorrow is the great limiting belief hoax. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant of what I see out there happening and what hasn't worked for me and maybe for you. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Wednesday is really oriented to all of you who have a business or who dream of having a business one day. So what are some of the things that are so important for you to be thinking about and that can help you kind of create success? And what does that look like in your own way? Uh, Thursday is about what most people don't know about prosperity. And Friday is like bringing it all together and talking about what we don't maybe know already about wealth creation. And when I use words like wealth, prosperity, I kind of use them interchangeably. It is the inner and the outer experience and like whatever uh, iteration that you decide works for you. The key objectives for the week is looking at the big picture of the concepts that are presented in the Mindful Millionaire book. You can imagine that I'm sort of, you know, I finished that book over the past year and new things are coming through. And so what I, I can see is sort of a framework that I couldn't see when I was inside of the book, but now that I'm out of it, I can. And I think it'll guide you and help you get more out of the book. You know, thinking about the wealth paradigm that you're living in and what you might want to make some changes, perhaps, with. Uh, explore embodied, integrative, mindful living. Evaluate what you want and what might be holding you back. Um, not letting things stop you from finding your genius. Giving yourself permission to create what you want going forward and next steps. And for each of the days we're meeting, we'll be having an opening, which we're about to do a little bit of meditation just for a few minutes, perhaps some review, not so much today, uh, the specific teaching for the day. And then, like I said, at the end, there will be time for questions. I'll turn off the recording. Um, we'll just open it up to a discussion to see what we want to share. If you have some specific questions for me, I'm happy to dive into them. And then every day you'll get an email the next morning um, that will have like the worksheet that we that we're going to be exploring for that day meditation it'll be the same meditation every day i really want you to be practicing the chakra meditation if at all possible all week long because i know that that works at a very subconscious level it will invigorate you it will allow you to get more out of the these sessions um, and then, and then the replay link will be there. So if you miss a day, you'll get that the next day. I want to give you a little bit about me. This is like a loaded slide, but I wanted to plant this seed because some of you might be brand new to me. And I just want to share, you know, I, Lisa Peterson, help ambitious, heart-centered coaches, therapists, advisors. And that's really like anyone who has anything to do with anything financial, um, who've come a long way in looking inside, but also know there's still something holding them back. And I help them shed the unconscious thoughts and behaviors so they can grow their business, grow their wealth, inner wealth, outer wealth, all of the above. Um, I've got a long list of different things that I've done in the past. Those aren't actually as important to me as what I'm about to share, which is at the bottom of this slide, which is the reason why this work is so freaking powerful and has had such a big impact in people's lives is because I am only teaching things that I have applied in my life over the past 20, 30 years. And I will not teach someone something unless I have actually met that inner demon and worked through it myself. And because there's been so many of those breakthroughs over the past 20 plus years, it is a very effective uh, praxis that I teach, right? Practical um, theory, taking theory and then implementing it at the very practical level. That's what everything is, um, is what is focused on here. So I wanna to start today before we do the meditation just with an entry because I decided I was kind of on the fence about like, should this be a webinar and we can't talk or, and that wasn't really exciting to me. And once I saw the numbers come in of how many people were gonna show up live, I realized I could do this and keep the regular Zoom features, which means that even more so we're connected. We can see one another in the, in the, um, 
in the videos for some of us. And we're really creating a circle here, right? A circle, we're opening up this connection that we all have with each other. Whether you pop in or pop out, we do have a circle being created. And so as we create a circle, both here and in the Mindful Millionaire community, there's a few things I just want you to be keeping in mind. Um, number one, have fun. Like, have fun. Please, please, please make this fun. There is so much opportunity to laugh at ourselves, to laugh at me. I will give you plenty of reasons to laugh at me, and I'm totally down on it because that's just like, I have a lot of quirks, and I embrace and love my quirks, and I'm totally comfortable with you guys having a good time with my quirks and weird things I say and whatever. I'm great with it. But we are creating a sacred, safe space for ourselves, for others. Please, please, please be on time, okay? It's respectful to me, it's respectful to you and to everyone else, so I'm saying this now. And then when you come, turn off the buzzers and beepers. Like if you're here or you're watching the replay, like do yourself a favor and don't do this distracted because distracted will not allow you to touch into the unconscious aspects that I am transmitting to constantly. My sheer being is transmitting things that are not on these slides. And if you're distracted, they are going to go right over here, right past your heart, right past your gut. You're going to miss them. So be here now. Let go of the judgment to yourself, to me, to everyone else, <laughs> as best as you possibly can. Inquire deeply. Take personal responsibility. Slow down, practice deep listening, and please, please, please express your truth. And the way we do that here, especially during the, the main session, is to use chat and share what's coming up for you. It, you know, you may not know it at the time, but I've, I say that when we feel compelled to share something, it's not just because we need to do that for our own ownership, but there's more than likely someone else who really needs to see you share that so they know that they are not alone, right? That someone else is also needing to hear it or you wouldn't be thinking about sharing it in chat. So please do that. Please do that here. Please do that in the Facebook community. And I'll talk more about that right here, the Facebook community. So not everybody was invited to this session. I am going to do a recap, a review next Tuesday or Wednesday for the whole community to see who wants to come and, and do another one of these. But but no matter what, the whole idea behind the vision behind the Facebook community was to create the sacred safe space. And I am like ruthless when it comes to that, to have it be free to join and participate as you move through the book. There's no barriers to entry. You just have to answer a few questions and that the community comes together. The foundation of a community being a community is because we are willing to ask for help and we are willing to provide support and that we don't just like see somebody post something and then not answer because we're too busy. Like we have a second and we can say, wow, I see you. I hold space for you. I love you. Awesome that you're doing this. Like, this is what creates a community. If we don't do that, I can't do that by myself. So I'm inviting you into that space to be like, I know this is a safe place. Lisa's ruthless. So are the people that are on this call that if we see something happen that isn't kind, beautiful, loving, supportive, it will come down very quickly. And that we are creating that safe vibration to hold for ourselves and for others who join us in the future. And, uh, and my friend, Stephen Morris, uh, actually sent a quote out this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. There's nothing more powerful than a united group of souls ignited in a common cause with love at the core, because that is what we do here, period. It's like, that's everything, everything. I stand wholeheartedly committed to that. So, okay. That little moment of grounding and connection. If I invite you, if you're in a place that's safe to do so, that you take a moment to close your eyes and to soak into this present experience of love. And you can even imagine that as you breathe in, you're breathing in love. 
And as you breathe out, you're breathing out love. This is Tonglin practice, breathing in love, breathing out love. Allowing your breath to center you, to calm you, to bring you into the present now moment. as deep as you wish those breaths to be. Breathing into your heart. And then moving your attention down to the root, where you might do a nice um, root lock, a squeeze, and that root lock may extend all the way to like the crown of your head and your eye sockets, squeezing, squeezing, and then all the way down, releasing. And as you release in the next breath, you can imagine perhaps a cord going down from the base of your spine into the earth or roots coming out of uh, the bottoms of your feet and going down into Mother Earth and mixing with the soil and the rocks and the roots of the trees and the moisture and just feeling this beautiful loving connection to Mother Earth that supports us so beautifully. And then from that rooted, grounded strength, you can move your attention from the feet up the body, just feeling the penetration of this beautiful healing energy up into the heart. And then moving up all the way to the crown and beyond, just opening up that divine connection however you see, feel, and experience it. And then welcoming that into your physical body, your energy body, your spiritual body, and then also into the circle that we've created here. And feeling that mixing of beautiful, loving energy and just noticing too, any intentions you have for yourself for this week, why you're here, what you're curious about, what you would really, really, really like to have revealed. And we can open our eyes, come back into the space. So today we're going to dive into paradigms. We're going to talk um, and just experience this mindfulness practice. Think about genius, like fighting for the genius in your life. And, um, hmm, and a few exercises. So there was a worksheet that I, I sent out. You might want to have it handy if you can, even if it's online, but I'll, I'll be showing it to you and you may just practice it afterwards, but I'll give you um, the process of how you'll be completing it. And like I mentioned earlier, everything that I teach is around praxis, this idea of of act and do. So we're bringing theory into practice. So like it's not just spiritual entertainment, which is awesome and fun, and there's always a place for it, but that's not really what I teach. I teach about bringing these beautiful experiences inside of us, right, that are coming up and, and so awesome to witness and then putting them into practice again and again. It's integration, right? It's everything is about that. 
And one of the other big things that I just want to define, because I don't know your background, everyone's coming from different places here in this workshop, but I want to mention about personal paradigms, because each of us are living in many paradigms in any given moment. And we have a paradigm or two or three or 20 or 40 uh, that relates to our experiences with this, this idea of prosperity. And so I want you to just know that a paradigm is a mental model that shapes understanding. And it is in effect the patterns in our mind that shape what we see, how we see, what we understand, how we understand. And, and the work and the book and the, the, what I've done in The Mindful Millionaire is try to create a place, right, where you can safely begin to question the paradigms that you are living in as it pertains to money. And so this workshop all week, I'm going to be encouraging you to question assumptions behind the paradigm that you are living in. Another thing that, that I can mention too, right, is para paradigms are invisible. Most people don't know their own paradigms, especially well enough to change them. They think this is the only way. There is no other way but this. And so therefore, they don't question them. And my whole kind of praxis is let's question all the assumptions and see which ones we want to keep, you know, the paradigms that are really serving us and then those that aren't. And then the more we become familiar with this process of identifying our paradigms, the more powerful we become in our own lives and in the world around us. So our own paradigms often get in the way of actually seeing other people's paradigms, which is very interesting. This is one of the things that, that when we're a coach or we're an advisor or we're a mentor to others, it is super, super important that you have a regular practice that's questioning your own paradigms so that you can help other people notice theirs. That's why we become so good at helping others when we've spent many years questioning our own paradigms. We become like paradigm ninjas that are like, yeah, no, I'm not, that's not, that's not true. I'm going to help you see it a different way, right? Because we can see how we've been stuck in a paradigm before and how we actually got out of it. So we want to own our paradigms, nothing wrong with them. Uh, inquire de openly, deeply, and, and that's really everything that we're doing here. Another way to think about it, a paradigm, is it's this process of beliefs lead to strategies, lead to behavior, lead to results. And so you can imagine that when we change our beliefs, we change our strategies, we change our behavior, and we change the results. And so this is why it's so powerful and helps us so much when we dive into them. So I want to again invite you, if you're in a place that you can do this, to just close your eyes for a moment. And just get familiar with your body. You know, the, the chakra system that I teach a lot about starts in the root, right, with the root chakra and goes all the way to the crown. And so this is the part of you that I want you to just notice for a moment. Just get familiar with it, breathing in and breathing out. And what I'd like you to do is take a moment and think about money in your life. Think about money. Think about how you feel about it, how you act with it. How you are with it. You might even have a, a visualization of like a hundred dollar bill or something like that. Or looking at your bank account online. Just notice money. And, and I'm sure we all have some really great, awesome things that we feel about money. And I also just want you to notice, just give yourself a chance to just notice if there's any feelings about money that, that feel stressful. Just opening yourself to that. And... Um, 
and see if you can give it like maybe a, there's a color with that feeling. There's any kind of stress or tension, you know, or something that you know that you really are working on, right? So if there's a color associated with it, a feeling. And then also notice as you connect into yourself and your body, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the brow, and the crown. Just notice if your attention goes to one of those as you tune into that stress. And just trust the first thing that comes, even if you don't understand it. If you've got something, you can open your eyes and come back into the space. And again, notice and go ahead and put in chats if you, if you feel okay with it. Like, was it in the root? Is it in the belly, the lower belly or the, the sacral, the, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the brow, or the crown? Left side of belly. And just notice even too. And, and as you tune into that, what I invite you to do is these are themes that you're going to see throughout the book, the scarcity lens and the prosperity lens. And I want you to just notice where, you know, might not even be super specific yet, but just notice if any of these resonate with something that's going on inside of you as it pertains to money. And, and notice the corresponding. So the root is down there at the bottom, safety, security, fitting into the tribe, feeling safe. Um, this worthiness, mine is at the root, color mud brown, interesting, brownish color. Yeah, huh? it's like this muck, if you will. Uh, noticing you know, the power, the love, the trust, the enoughness, the wholeness, just notice those things because you're gonna be invited to do this again and again as you move through the book. Because what these feeling sense, you know, when we close our eyes and we, we just listen and we ask ourselves questions, we're gonna to start to be noticing things and patterns and the paradigms that we're living in. These are seven examples of paradigms. Safety, worthiness, power, love, trust and significance enoughness and wholeness. And these are the, these are like, I mean, this stuff is so amazing with the chakras. You know, this is what inspired Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It inspired Joseph Campbell's, uh, the hero's journey. Like this is a map that we could use to live the rest of our life by. And it goes so deep and so vast. And I'll be giving you more and more as we go along. But I wanted you to just tune into what might be coming up for you today, because this is a sign of the paradigm that you're living in. Just one. Red, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm not going to go into this today, but what I want to say is that the deeper you go down the rabbit hole with this, there are more and more things to discover. And that's what I Prosper is introducing you to in the Mindful Millionaire. But you'll see this again and again. And if I had another slide, you'd actually see 21 different scenarios of where this can take us. Again, not time today, but I wanted to just explain the depth of like what we're tapping into. The Mindful Millionaire was meant to be very much of an introduction. Not quite yet, Lisa, because we're still, I will give that later this week. So um, what we're doing is we're diving into something that just grows as we pay more attention to it. So, um, so with that, what I wanted to share was this, this idea of joy, because when we look at the paradigms, what we're looking for and, and what we're trying to understand is where might the paradigm that I'm living in cause me to not be living in a joyful life. And maybe we're living in a joyful life in some areas. And then there's these other areas where there's a lot of 
um, there's a lot of tension or perhaps avoidance. Like we don't even have the tension yet. We're just like pushing it away. It's like for another day. Um, and, and just to be clear, until something is integrated and not resisted, not avoided, we aren't able to live in joy with that thing. The thing that we are living in joy with is always going to be the thing that is most integrated in ourselves. Okay, so this is, so I've prepared some notes about joy and I'm checking that time, we're okay. So it is in the acceptance, um, in the acceptance of life and all of its encounters that joy is found. So when we want more joy with money, it's actually quite simple. We must become more mindful about it and how it affects our lives. It's, it's beautiful, so simple, kind of. It's inevitable that joy will come as we do this more and more. I also know that when we see both the dark and the light, we notice the joy that is possible for us. So it's not in the avoiding the darkness, which is so common in the world that we live in, right? I'm going to avoid all the bad stuff and I'm just going to go to the things that like are sexy and attractive and instant fix and, you know, just give me that, that, that hit of juice that, that makes me feel better for a minute. Like that's, that's the opposite. <laughs> but you'll be seeing elements of this pathway to joy throughout the week in different ways. Um, it's the foundation of the book and all my teachings are around using the chakras as a healing tool to get to the joy. So something that is behind all of this, and you're going to see this come up as you read through the book, is that I think there's something happening on the planet that is going to bring immense joy to all of us. And yeah, great, joy versus happiness. Let me just tune into that for a second. Joy is uh, the next stage. When you think of a, a map of consciousness, joy is way up there at the top. Happiness is a fleeting experience that often is equating to what is happening in the moment. Is everything good? Then I'm happy. Joy, as I would define it, would be the undercurrent of your life at all times, regardless of what's happening. So developing this understanding of what it means to be able to be in joy, even if things are falling apart, like that's the difference. So, so something that's going to bring joy to all of us in the coming years that's happening on the planet right now is we're seeing this shift in the balance between the masculine and the feminine, and it's softening all of us, even if it doesn't feel like it sometimes, it's softening all of us to a whole new level. In the West, this actually started uh, Carl Jung, who opened the door to over 100 years ago, right, to the individual having these two manifold aspects, right, the animus and the anima the male and the female. And this healthy and joy -filled, filled life is about finding and, and really understanding the, the balance that we can have as a human being by, by bringing them together. And so what occurs when we lose this balance, which is what's been happening for thousands of years, we've lost the balance, it essentially creates weakness. And, and weakness is the result of an unconscious belief that we're powerless. An idea that we are not all born equal, even though um, we are truly equal at the core, at our energetic foundation. And I'll explain this. So this is a paradox. Um, some people, it's true, are born with physical disability or illness that seems to set them apart. Others are born into lives of severe lack and oppression, uh, oppressive cultures, poverty. I mean, the list is long, right? And then there are others who are born into great privilege, with opportunity, with freedom, with choices. And so when we look at the world, it doesn't really seem fair. It doesn't seem as though we are equal. But as we begin to learn more and more about ourselves, we realize that in reality, life is about finding the genius inside of us. 
at the most profound and realized level. And at this place of realization, we see how it is the genius that, that brings us back to this equality. That, that when we're equal to the task that we are being given, that, that this happens only um, if we don't cave in to, to the pressure, right? That we don't submit to life. Because what happens is many times we're born into an oppressive situation and we can't see beyond it, right? The paradigm is op we're oppressed. We are limited. We are, we are living on a scarce planet. We are not enough, right? It just goes on and on. But when we don't cave in to that harshness of life and to the oppressive powers that we see out there, we learn that we each have a different route towards discovering this fortitude towards embodiment of our genius so that we actually have equal opportunities in consciousness. That is the whole entire point of all of this, that we are actually all equal at the highest realizations. And the sooner we get to the highest realizations of what it does fully mean to be human and, and tapped into our power, we realize that all that other stuff is actually not true. It's, it's a creation of, of man, of societies, of time. And so wherever we are, whoever we are, we always have this opportunity to overcome the shadows that, that inside of us that cause us to believe that we are weak. And so the real question becomes, are we living a life worth living? Are we taking the bull by the horns meeting life halfway? Or are we submitting to the victim inside of us? Have we given up on ourselves or given up on this sense of inner harmony? Um, are we settling for less than we're worthy of? Um, or are we really being bold in the way that we approach life so that we tap into this genius within us? And that we, we have a sense of being so proud of the life that we're living. And this isn't just about outer achievement. I think that's where we've really got it wrong in the, in, in the West. You know, outer achievement doesn't necessarily denote a life of, of genius because genius is rooted in self-love. It is, it is about surrender to this place of loving understanding of ourselves all parts of ourselves rather than submission to some message of being a victim, for example. So when you think about yourself in your life, where would you say that you are weak? Where would you say are your weaknesses? Because we're only weak through our own perception. And what we see is weakness when really what is, is actually happening is an opportunity for growth and for maturity and for prosperity. It's actually in the weaknesses that we become the great person that we know we're here to do. Not pushing the weaknesses away, not ignoring them, not saying, oh, I don't need to look at them, but actually embracing them to the core of our being. And, and that, that when, you know, we think about our lives and we think about like, what's the weakest link or in the families, it's like, oh, you know, we're only as good as the weakest link kind of thing. Well, what if we turn that around and we say, well, actually, what if the weakest link is the, the area where I can grow the most? What if the weakest link is actually the reason I'm here in this life to learn and to thrive around, to face it, to look those inner demons, you know, full on and say, yes, Yes, I am going to see you and I am going to work through you. And on the other side of that, when I see that I have faced these deepest, darkest fears inside and I, and I move through them and I do not allow them to, to cause me to submit to them, I become the most powerful person I could ever be. Hmm. And so when we, we change our perception, um, of how we see money showing up, right? Or we, we, we look at the areas of our lives where we might struggle the most in our relationships with our money, our health, our family, that that's the area that you can 
potentially bring the whole of your life into greater harmony. It takes work. You have to know, um, you, you know that, that, that the tasks at hand are not necessarily going to be easy. That's why it builds this fortitude and this bravery inside of you. Um, and and it's, it's a powerful thing, especially in these times right now, where it's so easy to become addicted to the victim experience because it's being reinforced all over the place, right? But this is our test, is where do we go beyond that way of thinking? Where do we say, hey, this area I'm struggling with is the thing that I can turn around? Um, and when we submit to our weaknesses, this is when we get into this place of exhaustion. And there is a, there is a difference. There's a healthy exhaustion that occurs when we thoroughly expanded our creative energy to a task that was really important to us, right? We're just like, oh, okay, I did it. Like we're exhausted. You know, we don't even know we have that energy to keep going, but we're like, we know we did what we came to do. Whereas there's also fatigue that's about like sapping our life force to the point where you lose enthusiasm and you lose a lack of higher purpose. And that's where we're paying attention all the time. And where we might have done that in parts of our lives, we're like, yeah, I kind of lost my zest because it, it, it just felt like it was consuming me. So the answer with all of this is to, like I was saying, to fight for our genius, not to give in to the inner demons, but to see them, to bring them out of the shadows, to um, not push them away or push them into the dark corners, but learn how we can accept and how it's the weakest link that can hold the greatest power. And so as we give awareness to unlocking that power, um, we, we start to develop this sense of deep integrated self-love that I was talking about that opens the door to, to joy. So to excel in this, we must break free of the self-indulgent thought, I am not good enough. And those belief structures snap out of the victim frequency and also help ask for help along the way, which is a huge, huge part of the process, which is why community is so important. We must believe that we are capable and that we have far greater strength than we realize and that there is always going to be a, ten, a temptation to fall into the conformist system. And so we're stepping into this creative rebel, like we're getting comfortable with what it means to be in the world as a creative rebel, who's going to question assumptions and, and kind of this warrior sage where we're looking at the wisdom inside of us and that we're willing to pull that sword out because we're not going to go the same route that that conformist culture is pulling us into. So we, we join into the race to this higher level of consciousness and we let the race fill us with this vigor and excitement. That was a lot. It took a little bit longer to explain. I'm just going to check in. So I'm going to skip set past some things because I want to do this exercise before we finish up. So the exercise that I handed out to everybody is called the four forces. And what I found is by breaking life up into these four forces, it, it causes us to take action and to think about things that are going on and to like not avoid the shadows, right? So it comes down to understanding the four forces and then how they can help us create more joy. There's four emotional drivers and we're either moving towards, so as we look at this graph here that you guys have on a worksheet, we are either moving towards something or like I said, away from something. So pushing it away, avoiding it, right? Trying to get away from it. But we're looking at the whole and we're not labeling things as bad or good, right or wrong. We're just noticing as we complete this exercise. 
So on the top left of the quadrant, this is where the present and moving away from something applies. This is where we feel frustration. We live a great life, but we feel like we're lacking, you know, these wonderful experiences perhaps. So we are frustrated because we work hard and we don't have anything to show for it. That would be an example. And what, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna give you an outline of this and then your homework after today is to go and come up with you know, two to four examples of what you're experiencing in each of these quadrants, right? So I'm just gonna give you some examples now. And um, I think that my next slide is here. I am frustrated because I work hard and I have little to show for it. That would be an example of a frustration. Um, what, what you want to think about here is what are the frustrations that you feel? What do you know about yourself that you're frustrated about? And if you'd like to focus on it with money or your business or something like that, you get to pick it's your exercise. I'm just using examples with money. So, or we move into, um, like if we're moving away from something and it's something that we're afraid of happening in the future, then we come into this next one, which is, is like, um, in the case of the frustration, it could be like a frustration is an itch on your arm. The fear is that that itch is related to like cancer. So, so we're taking it one step further into the fear quadrant. I'm afraid because I may not have enough money to pay rent next month, for example. So I'm frustrated because I work hard and I have nothing to show for it. And then the fear, we step into that quadrant and we're like, you know, this is the thing. It's like something in the future that I'm afraid might happen. So the frustration is the, the moving away in the present moment and the future. We're fearing the future. So that's how this works. Let's see if I have some more examples. Um, the future, the frustration is I'm not making enough money. The fear is I won't pay rent. Future-based, not yet realized, right? Although fears rarely come to fruition, it causes us to take action and they are very important to note, but we're wanting to look at this how far in the future, um, you can, I, I'd say you make the decision of how far out you want to go. Uh, if you're feeling more frustration and fear right now about something, then keep it pretty like next month or three months for now. I think COVID is creating some really interesting dynamics. I use this in other, some, in other teachings. I feel like right now, the way, the best way I could describe what's happening with COVID is we're all standing on the edge of the beach and we have been for several months and the water's going out and we don't know if a tsunami is coming back at us. Okay. And, I mean, that's just one way to think about what's going on. We have a lot of different mixed messages happening. Stock market is up all this unemployment, people losing jobs, businesses closing. So I would say try to focus on that if there is any concern about what that looks like and feel into it. And again, don't resist because that's actually the opportunity to get the biggest breakthrough. So please say, take some time with this, look into the fears and frustrations, give voice to them. Even if, if, um, you know, it's uncomfortable, that's okay. I already told you there's a reason here for you to look at the things that are, are uncomfortable. Don't push them away. Don't ignore them. Please, please, please. And then next we go into the upper right quadrant, present and future, right? So I want something right now. We go to the immediate um, towards, it's real, moving towards something, which is a want or a desire. So in this case, we have, I want to be able to save more money. You know, that would be an example of a want. Um, and this can... This can be easy too, because if you take enough time on your frustrations and your fears, you may notice that you're just doing the opposite in this column. Maybe, maybe not. Or you might discover some new ones because you're going back and forth. Oh, well, my frustration is this. And then this is what I'm wanting to create. Uh, I want to, you know, I want more money. I want to lose weight. I want to have, you know, more success in my business. You know, all of those things. That's where you're going to put them, two to four of those. And this is very interesting too, because all of these can actually be looked upon as motivators. And that's, we'll go into that as we complete the exercise. But 
the reason that these are so powerful is because we, let's see, what's the next one? I want to become, so bottom right quadrant, towards in the future. So these are things that I would say might be 10 years out. Like this might be a really long-term goal. This might be a year goal. I think that aspirations, if they're big enough and juicy enough, they probably aren't going to be achieved in the next year. Like they're going to take time. I'll talk more about that later. But, but the idea is, you know, here, this is where you put something like, I want to be a millionaire. I don't know how to get there, but I aspire to be a millionaire. I aspire to have a seven figure business. I aspire to write a book. Like what are those things in the future that you're wanting? Okay. How hopefully that answers, but you're going to two to four in each of these. And that's the exercise for tonight. How are we doing? They're motivators. That's one way to think about them. When you tap into the fear and frustration, they're inviting you to peer into shadows, to notice where there might be some weak links, right? Some things that you're wanting to get out of this week, to get out of the book. When you move into the wants and aspirations, it's inviting you to decide what you actually want. It's like the coolest exercise. This is what my wealth flower exercise did for myself and for a lot of other people. And there's an example of it in the freebies and the mindful millionaire freebies. Um, but the, the wealth flower is like really take some time to decide what you want. But this is a quick exercise. The more we understand and accept our shadows, and desires and aspirations, the more we can create fully and freely. So this was the exercise I felt like would have the biggest impact for us. I love this quote by um, Mahatma Gandhi. Joy lies in the fight, in the attempt, in the suffering involved, not actually in the victory itself. So when we are um, far enough along that this <laughs> quote speaks to us, <laughs> we realize that it is in the step-by-step -step journey that the joy appears in the moment for us. So even doing this exercise can be joyful if you end up having a realization or learning something new about yourself or even having a piece of paper in front of you that says, I'm owning all parts of myself and I'm not gonna make any of this wrong anymore. The key lessons today that I wanted to, to touch upon is that joy arises through the relationship you have with yourself. It is in knowing the shadows and weaknesses so that you can see if there's any places hidden away that you might be giving up on yourself. Knowing these key motivators creates greater certainty, which leads to taking greater action and you know, I could go on a rant about this, but one of the things when I first started this work that I had to really learn how to harness is a lot of people come to spiritual teachings just for entertainment. And I was like, that's awesome. At least they're showing up. One and everybody come, come hang out with me. This is awesome. We're all going to do spiritual stuff together. But after a while, I started noticing that some people just want to hang out and have fun and talk really fun conversations. And I love that. It's awesome but I am like not that person because I actually really like action. I really like bringing this into reality. And that is the difference here. We are not just about self-discovery for its own sake, but we are also about like, where does this show up in my life? How do I integrate it? How can I be the wholeness, right? So we're going back to whole when we're fragmented, when we're just having spiritual realizations for the fun of it, and we're not applying it to our money and to our relationships and to all those things, it's, it's actually not doing us all that much good. It's fun, but that's about it. And, uh, and I think that it's actually way more fun when you're integrating it because that's when like joy, the joy really, really starts to take a hold of your life. And the last thing I'm going to mention, I will talk more about this, but it takes time to create prosperity and wealth. Um, my husband and I started with the mission or I kind of had the mission. He just went along with it. 1996, 10 years it took us to become a millionaire. And like if we're building a business and we want to have like a seven figure business, 10 years is a really reasonable amount of time. And I just wanting to put this in perspective because this isn't a quick fix. This is about reality and truth that if you give it, if you think of yourself today and where you're at, and you think 10 years from now, this is what I want. 
all of it can become possible if you make the commitment for it. And that's what this will hopefully just repeat over and over and over again so that you know. And you might be halfway on the path and it's five years. Like it, it's not, it's just if you're first starting out, then that's a pretty good time frame to be thinking about. Next steps is the assignment. There's a meditation for tomorrow. There's a journaling question. You'll get it tomorrow morning. I think they come out at five or 6 a.m. But the, the journaling prompt, if you want to dive into it, is to write a letter to money, share how you feel about money, what your beliefs are about it, how you feel it serves you, how you feel it doesn't serve you, and just see what comes up. Like open the door. It's kind of fun. You could just have a conversation with money too. You don't have to write it down. Um, or you can pair up with someone and you each talk to the other person as if they're money. And yeah, whatever comes, then, then that comes. But they're super fun exercises. So much comes through it. And, um, and I'll be mentioning this throughout the week, but um, a lot of people are curious, like what's going on, what's happening. Um, when in the fall, I will be diving into the I Prosper system again. But if you've done it before, we're kind of re-overhauling the whole program. I worked on developing something um, to write the book. And now that the book is done and people can read the book, it's like the information is ready to go to a different level. And so I'll talk about this more. Uh, but I, I did it in one hour. <laughs> I didn't know. It was close. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the uh, recording. I'm going to stop sharing. And let's see. I am going to um, thank everyone for being here. If you need to sign off, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will be here tomorrow to talk about beliefs, limiting beliefs, and kind of how those work in our lives. And, and yeah, I'm just, let's see, turning off the recording.